just as we have the false dichotomy in science, for example, the creationists who feel they win by default if they can just somehow debunk evolution, it appears that, at least here in the United States, we also have a false dichotomy in politics. Witness this video. Do you consider yourself liberal or conservative? Uh, neither one. I consider myself libertarian which is different from liberal or conservative to a much greater degree than liberal and conservative are from each other. Democrat. Republican. Or independent. Okay, to be independent is not to have a party. Thus, they don't have a mascot. But there are a lot of people who aren't Democrat or Republican who nonetheless have a party. There are members of the Green Party, the Constitution Party, and yes, the Libertarian Party. There are many others, but the ones I mentioned are the only ones on the ballot in a significant number of states, the Libertarian Party being the biggest by this metric. And although we don't have an official mascot for the National Party, a lot of state parties have adopted the Penguin as our mascot, particularly the Liberty Penguin, designed by Ann Kaysan. Ever since the highly contested and utterly divisive presidential election of 2000, our country has been reduced to red states and blue states, and its people characterized as being either conservative or liberal. It's just not that simple. A red state is simply a state, the electoral votes of which went to the Republican candidate as opposed to the Democrat. That does not mean that the state is Republican all the way through. For example, in my home state of North Carolina, a so-called red state, six of North Carolina's 13 representatives in Congress are Democrats, elected by as much as 73% in 2006, more than any Republican got. In our General Assembly, the Democrats rule in the Senate 31 to 19 and in the House by 68 to 52. Our governor, Mike Easley, is also a Democrat. Something else I also hear is how bad our evolution education must be since, as a southern red state, the creationists are obviously everywhere undermining it. But according to the Fordham Institute, North Carolina is one of six states that received a perfect score, a perfect 100, in the teaching of evolution in science classes, along with California, Connecticut, Indiana, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. Don't let a single election result color your opinion of an entire state, literally or otherwise. In the dictionary, liberal is defined as broad-mindedness, generous, sympathetic, free from bigotry, tolerant of change. Was it not this mindset that led to the creation of the Food and Drug Administration in the early 20th century? Oh, you mean the same FDA which, by independent reckonings, has killed far more people than it's protected? Was it not that same mindset that was behind the creation of child labor laws, the minimum wage, civil rights legislation, social security, emission standards, public education, and the very establishment of this glorious nation by our founding fathers? Uh, no. Our founding fathers had a libertarian mindset, not a liberal mindset in the modern sense of the word. They were liberals in a classical sense, but this guy's talking about progressive liberalism, which is more akin to socialism. The whole reason for the term libertarian is to have a word to apply to the philosophy of our founding fathers, since the words liberal and conservative, both of which apply to the founding fathers in the classical sense, but not in the modern sense, have been co-opted by politicians to gain more power at the expense of our liberty. Almost everything he lists is a destructive social policy. Child labor laws were only enacted after the market all but got rid of child labor on its own. The only effect the law has is to stop teenagers who want to work from working and gaining experience that will help them later in life. The minimum wage only condemns the poor and especially poor minorities to unemployment and causes a greater dropout rate. The only ones helped by minimum wage laws are big corporations who face less competition from smaller firms who can't absorb the extra costs. 
civil rights legislation is a perversion of what the civil rights movement wanted, as the government used it as an excuse to grab more power and more of your tax money. Emission standards are a political game the federal government uses to intrude into state affairs, something not allowed by the Constitution, without the first bit of science to back it up and public education, by almost any objective standard, has made education worse, not better. By 1840, this country had near universal literacy among the non-slave population. Now, 40% of high school graduates are illiterate, according to the government's own figures. Progressive liberalism is a failed social policy. On the flip side, let's examine the word conservative is defined as favoring traditional views, tending to oppose change. Okay, he's shown us the definition of both liberal and conservative. So let's look at the definition of libertarian. Noun, a person who advocates liberty, or adjective, advocating liberty or conforming to principles of liberty. Interesting word liberty, interesting in that it wasn't present in either of his definitions. Does that mean a conservative mindset is in opposition to the previously mentioned accomplishments that have without a doubt had a positive impact on our country? Without a doubt? All of the evidence shows that these policies are destructive to our country, every bit as destructive as the war on drugs and the inflation tax, two more things that modern liberals don't seem to want to get rid of which harm the poor and minorities as much as anything else. Here's the graphic he opens and closes with. No greater example of cherry-picking is needed. While it is true that the Republican presidents are horrible when it comes to deficit spending, it is not true that Clinton presided over any kind of surplus at all. The lowest deficit of the Clinton years was $80 billion. He only made it appear that there was a surplus by raiding funds from Social Security but that $80 billion was still added on to our national debt. Now, you could make the case that these deficits were lower, because they were, but remember two things. One, there was a Republican-controlled Congress at the time, just as there was a Democrat-controlled Congress during the Reagan years. And two, Clinton just happened to preside during a period of economic prosperity, which doesn't really have anything to do with who happens to be president at the time. To get a better idea, let's look at spending for these years. As you can see, while the current administration's spending rate is much greater, the spending rate during the Clinton years wasn't increasing at a rate different from the Republican presidents who came before him. This is the false dichotomy. The Republicans and Democrats keep this up, each pretending that there are no other options, and each pretending that their philosophy is the philosophy of the Founding Fathers. The truth is, if the Founding Fathers saw what they were doing, they'd wonder why we haven't had another revolution to get both groups of big government tyrants out of power.